Today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a recirculating aquaponics system that works off of an aquarium. So let's go over the parts list first. Now, there are a multitude of different ways you can design this and put this together. This is just the way that I'm doing it, and I'll explain a little bit about why that is throughout this process. So the first thing we need here is this bar sink strainer. This is just what goes in the bottom of a bar sink. And then we have this 3 8 inch hose barb tee. A package of stainless steel hose clamps. These are 5 16 to 5 8 inch. Half inch PVC pipe. Half inch PVC street 90 half inch PVC 90 with threads on one end, 3 8 nylon hose barb with half inch threads, half inch clear vinyl tubing with a 3 8 inch inner diameter, a sponge filter typically used for aquarium filter inlets, a small circulation pump, a piece of inch and a half tubing, this is used for sink drains, this is not scheduled 40, a inch and a half PVC street 90, inch and a half PVC regular 90, 3 inch PVC coupling, 1 inch and a half PVC coupling with threads on one end, a length of inch and a half PVC pipe, a container for your plants, and in my case, a shelf for the said container. All right, so before we start putting everything together, uh, this container here, I only chose this because it fits on the shelf that I purchased, uh, and this is just large enough, not too big, not too small for the wall that I'm gonna mount it to. So the first thing we're gonna do is drill a hole in the bottom of our container here, and we're gonna do that so we can fit our sink drain into. We're not gonna need this black plastic insert for now. We are gonna come back to that later and do some modifications as well. So this sink drain here is actually a stainless steel finish. However, if you're gonna make something like this, I recommend just getting a plastic bulkhead. I simply couldn't find the size that I wanted in the stores that I shopped at. And we are gonna make some modifications to this, which I'll come back to and explain later in the video. I also chose black plastic here simply because I didn't want to use white and have to paint it. All right, so now that I've got the hole drilled through the bottom of the container, I'm going to mark the center of that and then drill a hole through the shelf as well. Okay, so now I have the hole drilled through the bottom of the shelf as well as the container, which is going to line up nicely with the sink drain. And that brings me over to the sink drain itself. I'm going to talk about what we need to do to modify this and the reason. So there is a cross here and we need to cut that out. And I already made a black line we need to cut up to that line and then pry back the metal so that we have a nice opening as big as that. And the reason for that is because we're going to take this piece of tubing here and that is going to go down inside that and it's going to go all the way through the bottom of that. And the reason why we want to cr cut that cross out there is actually because plant roots tend to grow all over the place uh, when they're submerged in water and we don't want any roots growing down that tube and then getting stuck and then causing a blockage. So we want to have the biggest opening we can have without any obstructions or burrs. So that tube is going to extend through that and the pressure from the metal is going to hold that tube in place. And once we get the water level to where we want it to be in the container, which is going to sit like this, we're going to cut that off to about where we want it and then we're going to put silicone around the outside of this so no, no water goes down past that. All right, so now I have the bottom of this drain cut out. I basically just used a Dremel tool and some tin snips, and I flared these ends out just enough so that we can put it over top of this inch and a half tubing, and it will slide over there and hold itself in place for the drain tube that goes in the container. Now, as far as a sink drain goes, if you're gonna use the same exact thing I'm using here, you're gonna to need to buy an extra rubber washer. This is for a tub drain. The inner diameter is inch and three quarter. That will fit right over top of that, and it will sandwich together just like a bulkhead. Um, if you're going to do it my way, I also recommend using a little bit of silicone around this part here before you put that washer on just to make sure it's sealed really well. All right, so I have the drain attached now and I went ahead and silicone the heck out of it. I don't think there is too much when it comes to leak prevention. So I did the outside as well as the inside. And these are things you're not going to see anyway, so it doesn't have to look pretty. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and attach our threaded coupling. Okay, so now I've got the PVC joint attached to the drain, and we're going to go ahead and figure out where we're going to make our hole for this insert here. It doesn't have to be perfect in this situation. I just want the water level to come above this part here. So we're going to go ahead and probably just cut out a square here and then put the tube in and we'll determine what level we want the water to be. So for my system, this is about where I want the height of the drain tube to be. It's gonna fill up about halfway in the container and then flow over into the drain tube. So now what I'm gonna do is silicone around the drain down there so that no water goes past it. Okay, now the container is mostly prepped. I got the drain tube secured in there, all siliconed in place. Now what I will be doing here, and I'm probably not gonna be showing you on the video here, but I'm going to have a grid system on the top here. So there will in here, there will be either a netting or just a plastic grid. So I can take my cuttings of my pothos ivy and just shove it right through the grid. It'll stay right in place and go down into the water. Now, in order to pull the water out of the aquarium and pump it up to the reservoir using the inline pump there, 
we're using this simple setup here to where the vinyl tubing will connect to this fitting here. These will connect together into this half inch piece of PVC pipe, which I've drilled a bunch of holes in. And then this filter will slip over top of that and the bottom is also sealed there. So nothing can get pulled out of the aquarium and clog up the pump or anything else. Okay, now that I've got that all set up, we're gonna set that aside and we're actually gonna take the fill tube which is gonna come out of the pump and it's gonna come up through the drain tube right here and we're gonna attach that to the T. And the T is gonna sit right in there and then that's gonna spray the water into the reservoir so we have a concealed fill tube and everything is just nice and neat with one tube going up to the shelf. So now I've got the shelf mounted and the container sitting on top of it and the drain tube partially connected. And now we're gonna talk about what this is for. This three inch coupling is gonna simply slip underneath here and it's gonna hide all of that and just make it look a little bit more stylish. Okay, now that I got that piece attached, we're gonna go ahead and attach this little collection of fittings here, which is where it's gonna flow back into the tank. And this joint here that connects to this is only gonna be connected on uh, temporarily, as in we're just gonna put some electrical tape around there to hold it in place, because uh, I wanna be able to take that off and take this whole thing out if I had to. Okay, so now I got the feed tube going up the drain tube. Now all that's left to do is really just connect the pump and the inlet all right, I got the pump and the piping all connected. You can see the feed tube going up through the drain tube and it is coming out in a loop there, heading an upward direction and then back down. That's just in case any water decides to follow that tube, it drips into the tank instead of right outside the tank. All right, this is what it looks like when it's mostly finished. The only thing that's missing is the plants and the trellis. There's gonna be a trellis on the wall for the potos ivy to hang and climb on and it's gonna kind of droop down towards the tank there. So this is gonna be a pretty nice little system. Never have to worry about watering it, and it sucks up the excess nutrients in the tank, preventing algae. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started, make sure there's no leaks, and that'll be it for the video. Okay, it's been about 24 hours and everything has cured and dried, and so far there are no leaks, and you can see the system is working. The water's being sprayed out in a diagonal fashion here, and it's actually causing like two cyclones on either side of this container and the water's going down the tube just as it should. And it's going right down into the tank right there. Now, in order to reduce noise, I'm thinking about modifying this here so that it will be quieter as it falls into the tank. Uh, or what I will also try to do is adjust the pump with an inline dimmer switch so that the flow rate is a little bit slower. Now I'm gonna talk about a few pointers that you might wanna consider if you're gonna design this system yourself. So first off is the inlet. You can see here that it does not dip down too deep into the tank. It just goes right in the top level of the tank. And that's just in case something happens, such as if there's a clog that starts up there and something overflows, it's only gonna suck out a few gallons worth of water rather than the entire tank. So that's just a, a safety precaution with the way that's set up. Now, as far as the pump goes, I have it sitting down below the tank. And the reason why you'd wanna do that is because uh, this will prevent air from getting into the pump. So all the air will come through and rise up out of it and it will stay primed that way. So what's really nice about this system and the way it's set up is that the water level in this tank will never go below halfway because of the way the drain tube is set up. So if the pump should fail, the reservoir is not going to run dry and you don't have to worry about the plants dying and you'll have time to replace the pump. So what this is going to do for me is it's going to suck up the excess nitrates in the tank and pretty much eliminate the need for water changes, uh, almost eliminate anyways. I will just have to be topping off with either distilled or RODI water, and that'll be pretty much it. So this is pretty much the finished product, minus the trellis that's going to go up on the wall once the plants get bigger. And I did not show you, um, because I have not made it yet, but there's going to be a screen or a mesh or a grid or just a piece of plastic with a bunch of holes drilled in the top of that so I can put my cuttings through the holes and dip them down into the water, and they'll be held in place. So... I will leave links for most of the products uh, that you saw here in the video or whatever I can find just to make it easier for you guys if you like what I have going on here. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed.